Welcome to Vegas Hockey Hub here in the sports entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, on PRConnectionRadio.com, the voice of new media. I'm your host, Ian McKelly. The Vegas Golden Knights have put on a fantastic show, a fantastic performance in the beginning of the 2022-2023 NHL season. Your Vegas Golden Knights have started out with solid momentum and a lot of attention, a lot of stuff you got to be talking about when it comes to the Vegas Golden Knights is the production and the productivity of the bottom six. You really have to focus, and I'm going to give a lot of attention and respect to not only Phil Kessel, who you see on your screen right here, right now, you also have to give respect to other players like Brett Howden, someone who ever since coming over from the Tampa Bay Lightning, ever since coming over from the New York Rangers, has been a solid contributor. Michael Amadio, who is someone that you could definitely say has been a good addition to the Vegas Gold Knights organization. You also have Nicholas Waugh, who has ended up, ever since being traded from the Carolina Hurricanes in the Eric Collins, an Eric Collins deal, as someone who has been a solid addition to the Vegas Golden Knights organization. And then you also have William Carrier, an original misfit, someone who has been a good addition to Vegas since being drafted in the 2017 NHL expansion draft. By the way, quick segue, I want to say real quick, William Carrier has been a great addition. Not only do we talk about the 2017 NHL expansion draft, not only do we take a look back at the 2017 NHL expansion draft here on Vegas Hockey Hub, and we did an entire video on it, I will leave a card up here so you can end up watching it. And then you have the hard-hitting guy who has made an impact in Vegas ever since he has joined the organization, and that is that man right there, Egan Colazar. But until we really talk about any of those guys, we are going to discuss one important topic, and really the title of tonight's episode does the Vegas Golden Knights have the best bottom six in the NHL? Does your Vegas Golden Knights have the best in all of the NHL? Out of all 32 teams in the NHL, does Vegas have the best in the entire league? But in order to break that down correctly, in order to really discuss this, we have to bring up the analytics. We have to bring up the statistics to back up this argument. What we did here on Vegas Hockey Hub is I went over every single NHL team and I created a spreadsheet and I went over all 32 NHL teams bottom six and I calculated what their goals, what their assists, what their points are over the past two seasons. Now, I did the past two seasons for a very important reason, and that was because the last two seasons, the Vegas Golden Knights and every single team has played around 90 games up to this point. So you have a good sample size, a nice window of time to compare every single team and what their bottom six has done in terms of production, in terms of goal scoring, or the passing the puck around, every single NHL team has put up numbers over the past two seasons. That would be 2021, 2022, and 2022, 2023. So, using the analytics of the bottom six, the Vegas Golden Knights actually are ranked first in the NHL leading the NHL with 185 points scored in their bottom six. When you combine Bill Kessel, Nicholas Waugh, Brett Howden, Michael Amadio, William Carrier, and Keegan Colazar, you add all six of them up, and you combine their points and assists and all their goal scoring, you get 185 points, which leads the entire NHL. 
Now, the rest of the top five is pretty alarming, to say the least. You have the Montreal Canadiens with 178 points, the Columbus Blue Jackets with 169, your Florida Panthers, who won the President's Trophy last year, 163, and then the Carolina Hurricanes round out the top five with 160 points. A team, by the way, that's dead last, I just want to talk about this for laughs and giggles, the Philadelphia Flyers have only 36 points and in their bottom six. That means that their bottom six, which are six players, they're averaging less than six points out of everybody on the bottom six. That's pretty bad. So the Vegas Golden Knights lead the bottom six to 185 points. How this came out, by the way, all six of these players on the Vegas Golden Knights have combined for 64 goals and a whopping 121 assists on their bottom six. So let's get into this bottom six. Let's really break down the bottom six because I have a lot to say. The first one that I want to pay attention to is not only the Iron Man himself, not only the guy who made history against the San Jose Sharks by breaking the Iron Man streak made by Keith Mandel. A uh, shout out to Doug Jarvis, by the way. He had the record for almost two decades, and now it's been broken twice in less than, in less than a year. Bill Kessel, since 2021-2022, yes, I'm counting his time with the Arizona Coyotes, his stats have been eight goals and whopping 46 assists, which puts him at 54 points. Now, I'm going to ignore his terrible plus-minus, because, yes, he, his defensive ranking is not the best. I don't think that most people would say that Phil Kessel is known for his plus-minus in his career. As a matter of fact, Phil Kessel has a minus-148 in his career when it comes to plus-minus. But what Phil Kessel is known for is putting up 400 goals in his career, almost 960 points, and 1,200 games played in his NHL career. Not bad. But not only has Bill Kessel put up those statistics the past two seasons, but what Bill Kessel is able to produce on the bottom six is what you have to stress. What Bill Kessel can produce is what I want to pay attention to. Because not only does he pass the puck around, he does it flawlessly with Vegas. Doesn't matter if he was on the first line for a little bit, playing with Jack Eichel, playing with Chandler Stevenson and Mark Stone. Regardless, if you put him on the third line with Brett Howden and Michael Amadio, or even split him up and put him on the second line with Jonathan Marchessault or Riley Smith, for example. Bill Kessel in seven games has managed to contribute a lot to the Vegas Golden Knights. Bill Kessel has been able to take his over 1,000 games played, all the veteran leadership and all the experience Bill Kessel has, he has been able to become a really good player for the Vegas Golden Knights. And for someone who's going to be on the bottom six the majority of the season, Bill Kessel has been a standout and has been a bright addition to the Vegas Golden Knights. So, once again, looking at his statistics, 8 goals, 46 assists, or 54 points. He is a big reason on why the Vegas Golden Knights have the best scoring bottom six in the NHL. But he's not the only one who's going to be able to do it. You have Brett Howden over here who, you know, he was with Tampa Bay. He got abandoned. He was with New York. He couldn't develop. So he comes to Vegas and he starts developing into the guy that most people believe he was going to be if he was drafted in the first round in 2016. Brett Howden was expected to be an elite goal scorer in the NHL. This is a guy who put up 81 points in the WHL for the Moose Jaw Warriors in the Western Hockey League. This is a guy who put up over 150 points 
in his entire tenure in the WHL. He was supposed to be a dramatic player, an impact player in the NHL. He doesn't pan out in Tampa Bay. They flipped him over to New York. And in his three seasons playing for the New York Rangers, he only had 16 goals during that time. That is an average of five and a half goals in his career with the New York Rangers. He goes to Vegas, and the Vegas Golden Knights have made Brett Howden a redemption story. The Vegas Golden Knights have made Brett Howden become a household name here in Las Vegas. Brett Howden not only has had 21 uh, points in 54 games, this is also the same Brett Howden who did not have a positive plus minus before coming to Vegas. He gets to Vegas, his plus minus turns around with the Vegas Golden Knights. He eventually limits the amount of penalty minutes that he consumes out in uh, out there by going to Vegas. And his 10 goals in two seasons for Vegas has actually been a lot better than what he did in New York. To give you some context, in his final season in New York, he had only one goal and seven points in 42 games. So the fact that he did in 47 games a lot more and almost did triple what he did in his last season with the New York Rangers, Brett Howden has become a redemption story in the NHL. And I give him a lot of credit. Not only do I give Vegas a lot of credit for turning around Brett Howden, I think that he has been a great story in Las Vegas. And him having 10 goals, 11 assists, for 21 points, and with that plus 10 on the plus minus, he has turned out turned around his career. And he has become a better player in Las Vegas. And that's Brett Howden. Somebody else who has really turned around his career and has really become a stable of the bottom six in Las Vegas. Let's talk about Michael Amadio for just a second. Michael Amadio is a misfit in name because he was with the LA Kings, Ottawa Senators, Toronto Maple Leafs. He was being bounced around the NHL before coming to Vegas. And not only his 18 points in the 2021 season was the highest of his entire career, his 11 goals that season was the highest he had ever done in the NHL up to that point. As a matter of fact, 12 of his 28 goals have been in Las Vegas, and 20 of his 60 points in the NHL have come in Las Vegas. So Michael Amadio has been proven that you give him an opportunity, you give him a shot to be on the bottom six, and he can turn around his entire career. His 12 goals in 20 points in the Vegas Golden Knights system, he has developed and he has become a solid player in the NHL. So Michael Amadio, just like Brett Howden, got a second chance, got an opportunity to play for the Vegas Golden Knights, and he has become a solid contributor on the bottom six, a good addition to the best bottom six in the NHL. As we are talking about the bottom six here on the Vegas Golden Knights, we're talking about here on Vegas Hockey Hub, let's transition over to a guy that doesn't get enough respect outside of Vegas. A guy who should be on a top six someplace else, but because of how good the Vegas Golden Knights are, he's on the fourth line here in Vegas. Nick Waugh, since 2021-2022, having 16 goals, 21 assists, and 43 points with plus 12. Once again, that's 16 goals, 27 assists for 43 points. He has become a great part of the Vegas Golden Knights. You could actually make an argument that Nicholas Waugh should be on the top six in Vegas. And if it wasn't for William Carlson, his $5.9 million contract, you actually could say Nicholas Waugh could become a top six forward someday for Vegas. But, you know, his 51 penalty minutes, he's a guy who likes to fight. He's a guy that stands up for his teammates. He's got heart, and I, I respect him. His plus 12, 
Nicholas Waugh, ever since coming to Vegas, once again, he was someone who was around the zero to minus one category in Carolina. He comes to Vegas, and his plus minus has developed very nicely. As a matter of fact, he has a plus 23 in his career, and that includes Las Vegas. Nicholas Waugh has adapted nicely to the Vegas Golden Knights, and I give a lot of respect to Nick Waugh for what he has done in Vegas. And truthfully, I believe Nicholas Waugh, Nick Waugh, is going to be a top six forward, regardless if it's here in Vegas or if unfortunately he's got to go someplace else like Al Tufton. Nick Waugh is going to be a top six forward in the NHL. He has too much talent and he has too much momentum for Nick Waugh to not be a top six forward someday in the NHL. Someone who's been very consistent for Vegas, let's go to William Carrier. You know, 10 goals, 12 assists, 22 points. You know, when you see that on paper, it doesn't stand out. It's not something you're going to be in awe of. But William Carrier, if you watch him in Vegas, if you study William Carrier, this is a guy who is dependable. William Carrier is a guy who has become a, a reliable force for the Vegas Golden Knights. Regardless if it was year one during that expansion year, regardless if it was during the Mark Gallant era, Pete DeBoer era, or the current Bruce Cassidy era, regardless of who it was, William Carrier has become a reliable rock in Vegas. William Carrier has become one of the staples of the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, I'm not going to say he's a pillar, because that's a conversation we can have on this show another time. But what William Carrier is, is a support column. William Carrier is the wires, the cable. William Carrier is part of the foundation of the Vegas Golden Knights. And when you watch William Carrier, the way he can toss people into the board, the way William Carrier demonstrates his power by knocking people around, shoving people out, out, of, out, of the, out of people's way, and the fact that William Carrier can stand right in front of the goalie and become a blocking machine so that a goal can go past the goalie, that is an attribute that some people have and some people do not. And then lastly, on that bottom six, we need to go over Keegan Colazar. Because Keegan Colazar is an interesting case. I know that Keegan Colazar does not have the greatest plus minus in the world. Alright? I think. I understand that Keegan Colazar is rough around the edges when it comes to him having a lot of penalty minutes, having the most penalty minutes in the Vegas Golden Knights for the past few seasons. But Keegan Colazar has become a good player in Vegas. Keegan Colazar has become a vital part of the bottom six. He is someone that you want to have on your organization, someone you want on your roster. And ever since joining the Vegas Golden Knights and playing for Vegas since 2017-2018, he has become a bigger, bigger, and bigger part of the Vegas Golden Knights moving forward. King Colazar was signed to that contract extension for a reason. Because the Vegas Golden Knights believe that King Colazar is going to be a stable, reliable, dependable guy on that bottom six. You know, very similar to what I said about William Carrier just a minute ago. King Colazar is going to be a good part of the Vegas Golden Knights for the long-term future. Keegan Colazar is going to be a guy that you can rely on for the long term. So I will say that when it, when it comes down, really, to the Vegas Golden Knights and what they can do on the bottom six, you have dependability with Keegan Colazar, dependability with William Carrier. You have a bright upcoming future with Nicholas Waugh and Brett Howden. And then lastly, you have a second chance 
with Michael Amadio and the best player on your bottom six, and that happens to be Phil Kessel. Now, Phil Kessel, I want to very quickly talk about because Phil Kessel's journey in the NHL is an interesting one. Because not only was he part of Team USA for four seasons, not only was he part of the U.S. Uh, under-17 team, not only was he part of the USA's national under-18 team, not only did he compete for Team USA in the World Championships, which is incredible, by the way, at the age of 18, competing for Team USA in the World Championships, he also gets drafted by the Boston Bruins with the fifth overall pick in the 2006 NHL draft. Understand that when he signs that deal with Boston Bruins, the current general manager at the time was Peter Shirelli. Right, Peter Shirelli was the current man in charge when Phil Kessel was signed and was drafted by the Boston Bruins. Also, some people are going to not acknowledge the fact that when it came to Phil Kessel, that 2006 Boston Bruins team had some good members attached to it. They had some people that were able to turn around that organization. And one person that I have to give a lot of credit to, and one person that you have to acknowledge did a lot of good, was uh, the fact that they had a coach at the time. His name was Dave Lewis. But Dave Lewis was only there for a bit amount of time. But what he did was provide stability to that 2006 draft. And you really want to go one step more. That 2006 Boston Bruins draft class might be one of the best in the modern era. Not only did they draft Bill Kessel fifth overall, but they drafted Milan Lucic the second round, who is still playing in the NHL today and has had a long tenure in the NHL. And then, in the third round, they drafted Brad Marchand, who has been a top 10 player in the NHL and has been a longtime member of the Boston Bruins for the foreseeable future. I mean, to me, it's absolutely incredible how the Boston Bruins in that 2006 season really did uh, build their future by drafting Phil Kessel, by drafting Brad Marchand, and drafting Milan Lucic, getting three positives in that one moment. Now, the Providence Bruins, however, the team that was in the minors at the time, that was an interesting case because they had, in 2006, a roster that was being built to be a good membership. Not only did they have Nate Thompson, who has been a long-time stalwart in the NHL. But in that season, when they were in the 2006-2007 season, they ended up having a head coach. They ended up bringing in somebody who would end up being a solid member of the Boston Bruins. Someone who ended up having a good future relationship with Phil Kessel, and that ended up being Bruce Cassidy. Bruce Cassidy was part of the Providence Bruins in the late 2000s. And sure enough, Bill Kessel was part of the Boston Bruins organization around the same time Bruce Cassidy was. When Bruce Cassidy joined the Boston Bruins, Bill Kessel had 36 points for 60, uh, 60 points, 36 of them being gold out there in Boston. It was incredible see what Phil Kessel was doing. But Bruce Cassidy and Phil Kessel crossed paths because of that, because of the fact that those two had that relationship up to that point. You also have to recall that Bruce Cassidy and the Boston Bruins, they eventually had him become the head coach in Providence, eventually become the head coach in Boston. But there was a connection there, the Boston connection, to Phil Kessel and Bruce Cassidy. Now, one of the biggest trades in the NHL happened involving Phil Kessel. In 2009, Phil Kessel was traded to the Toronto Maple Leafs for two first-round picks and a second-round pick. And those draft picks actually helped the 
Boston Bruins win a championship. That first round pick in 2011 ended up becoming Dougie Hamilton, who actually won a Stanley Cup for the Boston Bruins and then moved on to Calgary and then Carolina, where he's been averaging 40 to 50 points a year as a defenseman. He also ended up getting Tyler Sagan, who was the second overall pick in the 2010 NHL draft. He has had over 600 points in his career, 300 of them being gold. And then, lastly, he plays for Toronto, has a few seasons for them, and then in a, stock, in a stunning blockbuster, a nine-piece deal, the Toronto Maple Leafs trade Bill Kessel and three other players to the Pittsburgh Penguins for a deal involving five players at the time. Now, I will say in very, very much confidence, Bill Kessel, he had a two-year stint, or sorry, really a three-year stint, where he was one of the best hockey players in the NHL. There was a three-year stint from 2016 to 2019 when Bill Kessel was undoubtedly a star in Pittsburgh. His four seasons played for the Pittsburgh Penguins involved two Stanley Cup championships. He also put up 18 goals in that two-year span of winning back-to-back Stanley Cup. And in the regular season, he had 70 points in 2016-2017, 82 points in 2018-2019. And then the best season of his entire career, he had 92 points, 34 goals in the 2017-2018 NHL season. So his tenure in Pittsburgh is where he had the best of his entire career. And I will give a lot of credit that the Pittsburgh Penguins indirectly saved Bill Kessel's career. Because people seem seem, seem to forget that Bill Kessel, he was consistently on the ice, but his tenure in Toronto was surrounded with controversy. This was a guy who averaged 60 points as a 21-year-old in Boston. And then he puts up 52 52 points, 55 points, 61 points. Bill Kessel was supposed to be a guy that got 80 to 85 points every single year. And unfortunately, he just didn't do that. So his tenure in Toronto was murky. He goes to Pittsburgh puts up the best performance of his career, and then goes to Arizona. And he didn't have a bad tenure in Arizona. It just wasn't Bill Kessel at. He had 38 points in 2019-2020. He had 43 points in 2020-2021. And then put up 52 points last season with the Arizona Coyotes. So I will say when it comes to Bill Kessel, I have a lot of respect for him. I appreciate him. But I will acknowledge that when it comes to Phil Kessel, his career has been an absolute roller coaster. From that uh, immediate start with the Boston Bruins, going up an absolute hill, to having a shaky up and down Toronto Maple Leafs, to then going straight back up, winning back to back Stanley Cups in Pittsburgh, and then going slightly down with the Arizona Coyotes. What Vegas is hoping, what your host Ian Kelly is hoping, is that he rebounds up and starts being on an upwards uh, trajectory with the Vegas Golden Knights. So that was episode 13 of Vegas Hockey Hub, talking about the bottom six and how it is the best in the NHL. And I want to say that Bill Kessel, Brett Howden, Michael Amadio, Nick Waugh, William Carrier and Keegan Polizar are a big part of it. And I will say to everyone watching around the world, go support the Vegas Golden Knights. Go support junior hockey like UNLV Rebels and the Las Vegas Thunderbirds. Go watch hockey. Go Knights go. And until next time, go.